what happens when a patient has pleural effusion? Imagine the lung, a delicate organ being pressed upon by an unwelcome guest. Excess fluid. This is the reality of pleural effusion, a condition that not only causes discomfort but can also lead to serious complications if left untreated. One of the most effective ways to address this condition is through a procedure called thoracentesis. Now this may sound intimidating, but in reality, it's a fairly straightforward process. The journey begins with the patient seated comfortably, often with their arms resting on a table. The doctor then marks the appropriate site on the patient's back, typically between the lower parts of the scapula and the upper parts of the waist. This location is chosen because it provides the safest access to the pleural space, the area between the lungs and the chest wall where the excess fluid has accumulated. Following this, the skin is disinfected and numbed with a local anesthetic. The doctor then carefully inserts a needle into the marked site, navigating through the layers of skin and muscle to reach the pleural space. Once the needle has reached its destination, the doctor attaches a syringe to aspirate or pull out the fluid. It's a delicate dance, a balance of precision and care. After the fluid has been drained, the needle is removed and a sterile dressing is applied to the site. The collected fluid is sent to a lab for further analysis, helping to pinpoint the cause of the pleural effusion. This procedure, while seemingly simple, is crucial in the management of pleural effusion. Not only does it provide relief from symptoms, but it also offers valuable insights into the underlying condition causing the effusion. In essence, thoracentesis is a beacon of hope for those grappling with pleural effusion. It's a testament to the power of medical innovation, blending skill, precision and compassion to bring relief to patients. It's a reminder that even in the face of adversity, there's always a path to recovery, and that is the beauty of thoracentesis.